What do you get when you combine tiny house traveling adventurers with house plant lovers? You get an opportunity to solve a challenge. How to keep plants safe and secure while towing our traveling tiny house down the road. Ideally, it should be a method that's always in place so that plants are always secure. We don't have to do anything extra when we go to travel. They're just secured and ready to go, whether we're parked or whether we're driving. Hmm. Something to secure the house plants, yet also looks good at the same time. Hmm. I have an idea to accomplish both needs. Yay! I love creative ideas and solutions. I'm so excited to see and hear what your idea is. Before I reveal the plan, why don't we let our audience in on the rest of our story? Hello friends, we are four life adventure buddies, best friends, mother and daughter, and two wonder pups on a journey to find, appreciate, and share daily wonders and joys with the world. We are transitioning from a lifestyle based in a regular house into a traveling wooden tiny house RV. We have been busy turning our longtime dreams into our reality. It hasn't all been easy, though with a daily commitment to ourselves to seek Wonder out Man. and appreciate wonders, we are learning that life really can be wonder-filled if we appreciate all the little and big wonderments along the way. We have been pouring a lot of effort into transforming this wooden tiny house on wheels into our inspiring, non-toxic and healthy home. We finally moved into our tiny house on a farm in Northwest Washington with spectacular mountain views. We weathered winter storms, marveled at wonderment inspiring migrating birds and completed more tiny house DIY projects. Now we are heading out on our first big road trip in our journey to Tiny House America as creative digital nomads. As adventurers, filmmakers, artists, dancers, teachers, and writers on a mission to share inspiring wonders with the world, we have a whole lot of wonderment and Tiny House adventures to share with you. By now, you've probably picked up on the fact that we really love our houseplants. Many of these houseplants have been with us for years and honestly feel like part of the family. I've had this ficus tree for over 20 years. It's been with me through thick and through thin. Now it's gonna be the first inhabitant of our tiny house. We really enjoy being around plants and we are determined to find a way for our house plants to be part of our new traveling tiny house full-time RV or lifestyle. Since our tiny, tiny trees and our plants bring us so much wonder, we just knew that they had to be part of our traveling tiny house. That being said, having house plants on all of our countertops or windowsills is not going to work long term. We need a solution to get these plants off the countertops and windowsills and in a setup where they're already secured for travel days. Any day we tow our traveling tiny house somewhere, which we will be doing a lot of. Before we begin cutting wood, drilling holes in our walls, or screwing anything into our beautiful pine windowsills, we need to have a really good idea of what this is going to look like and see if the idea is actually going to work out in real daily life. We decided to create full three-dimensional mock-up prototypes. Using cardboard, we made prototype shelves and corbel brackets. We loosely rolled paper to the width and height of our different houseplants so that we could decide what the ideal shelf size and placement would be both for our everyday life in a tiny house and for the health, safety, and needs of our houseplants. In a small space with lots of important multifunctional needs, optimizing space while at the same time creating a feel-good, beautiful, homey, and personally relaxing home environment is very important. We created these prototypes, placed them, adjusted them, and lived with them in our window trim edges for almost two weeks while we decided on our measurements and shelf placements. 
The time came for us to cut out our wood shelves and corbels so that we could proceed with this tiny house DIY project. And here is where a wonderful wonderment unfolded, the wonder of friendship. A longtime friend invited us to come and cut out our wood pieces in her woodworking shop. We took her up on her offer and spent the day together measuring, marking, and scroll sawing every single needed wood piece, plus a few extra wood corbels and such, in case we need them later or if anything breaks during installation. We are making our special shelves for the plants around the windowsills. Power tools are a wonderment. The project took all day, though we all enjoyed spending time together. Before we could complete any more work on these plant shelves, the time came for us to depart on our first big road trip with our traveling tiny house on wheels. We departed Northwest Washington and towed our house through a city over two mountain ranges and several rivers, 450 miles to Northeast Oregon, where we are now, ready to pick up from where we left off on our tiny house DIY project. We are currently staying at a small city RV park in Northeast Oregon. Out our back door is a really sweet green pasture with four horses. We can be at the river's edge in less than a five minute walk from our tiny house. We are enjoying going on frequent walks in the surrounding countryside and marveling at stunning pink sunsets. We find ourselves in constant wonderment that we are on a trip yet we haven't left home because we just towed our traveling tiny house on wheels to a new location. And here we are. Now that we have all of these wood pieces cut out, we have some major sanding ahead of us. Right now, these wood pieces have pretty sharp edges. We decide to use a Dremel tool to take the sharp edge off with this tool before we use our own muscle and pieces of sandpaper. While dremeling down all the sharp edges on these pine shelves and corbels is not exactly a piece of cake, it will certainly save us some time when it comes to the sand paper part. Here we are. We have an important DIY house job to complete. And yet so too the beautiful and awe-inspiring great outdoors is calling to us. And we are needing some time in nature after several indoor full-time work days. We realize that instead of having to compromise and either stay at home and get the sanding chore done or go on an adventure and delay getting this much needed task done, we could do both. Remember, life is meant to be filled with joy reasons for gratitude and adventure. And it just so happens that the feeling of wonder, or as we like to call it wonderment, actually helps to cultivate the ability to creatively problem solve and see answers where there previously were none. Now, I'm not saying that we never would have come up with the idea of taking our sanding chore with us on an adventure into the great outdoors, Though I would say choosing to live intentionally and committing daily to choosing to find and appreciate wonders does open the mind to creative ideas. We are going to go on an outing to a really beautiful place that inspires enormous wonderment for nature. And we are also going to get a lot of wood sanding done. Well, that is our plan. Let's see how it actually goes. On this sunny summer day, we head out on a drive through the Grand Ronde Valley in Northeast Oregon as we venture to one of Oregon's lesser known state parks that may just happen to be a beautiful, well-kept secret. We head down a little curvy and windy road. We pass by country farms and a family riding down the road on horses. As we drive through this landscape, we are appreciating all there is to see on our way to Oregon's Catherine Creek State Park. We have some special wood shelves and corbels that we've made for special shelves in our tiny house. We got to get them sanded. So we decided, because we're finding wonder adventurers, to come to a beautiful place and take care of our sanding chores while soaking in all the natural beauty.
box of special wood pieces to sand for your tiny house. And it's a bit of a tiny house tour. You gotta come, and you're finding wonder, like adventurer. You gotta come someplace beautiful to soak in the wonders while you get your chores done. We have come here to bask in nature and appreciate countless natural wonders, or as we like to call them, wonderments. We're here vis visiting Catherine Creek from the bridge over the water. The water and the trees and just like the sound of nature everywhere. The fresh sound of the, of, of the creek flowing. It's beautiful. Like literally soaked in natural wonder. Anything that inspires you to feel awe, wonder, amazement, or appreciation could be called a wonderment. This is Catherine Crick in Northeast Oregon. A definite wonderment. Totally like wonderment surrounded. It's beautiful. If you feel like saying, wow, that's beautiful, then that's what we call a wonderment. And trust us, we are in a place inspiring us to feel enormous amounts of wonderment. If the Big Bang Tower ceases to ring, it's okay, cause I could sing for you. If every flower went extinct, my heart would still be blossoming for you If the world stopped turning tomorrow If it all fell into the sea I'd let it sink to the bottom Cause I only care about one thing you know It's really cold water! Way colder than the river <laughs> Wow, it's really cold. We were in the river yesterday and it wasn't even close to this cold. Oh, but it feels wonderful on the high day. I say the same through any heartbreak. My love will remain if the world soft turn into tomorrow. If it all fell into the sea, I'd let it sink to the bottom. Cause I only care about one thing, you know. No, none of it matters as much as you matter to me. No, none of it matters as much as you matter to me. Oh, yes, oh, yes. This is what you call a cold, refreshing mountain creek. Way colder than the big river. <laughs> really refreshing. You know, no, none of it matters as much as you matter to me. That was exhilarating. <laughs> no, none of it matters as much as you matter to Our day at Oregon's Catherine Creek State Park was absolutely gorgeous. A couple solid hours of sanding did get completed, even with all the wonderment-inspiring distractions. Even if we got a little less work done on the shelves than we would have if we had stayed home instead, the benefits we receive from spending quality time in nature will certainly improve our ability to focus on completing this plant shelf project on the next day. Being able to go into nature and bask in all its splendor while also getting a house chore done was in itself a wonderment, a definite reason for wonder and gratitude. The installed plant shelves with plant rings look fabulous. We are really happy with the final look and functionality of this completed tiny house DIY project, and our houseplants are probably really happy too. 
We're glad we decided to make really rounded shelves. They look awesome, and there are no pointy edges for us to run into. We find ourselves staring at them in awe. Awe for the final results of all our hard work and love for ourselves for having completed the project from start to finish. After sanding up the plant shelves, I finished them with some walnut oil uh, carnauba wax product to give them a, some protection and a nice finish. And then we installed them. So we were running a bit tight for time and we didn't get to record the installation process, but you can picture it. It involved a lot of measuring and pre-drilling holes and then screwing the different pieces in and to each other. And voila, here are our plant shelves and they look absolutely incredible. We're so proud of them for how they turned out. They really were a complete creative brainchild of just needing to figure out an effective solution to keep our house plants in place for towing our traveling tiny house around and yet look good all the rest of the time. And we are so, so happy with how they turned out. We made them. This was a total DIY tiny house project. And the results are pretty fantastic. So I'll show you some more pictures. Living in a tiny house is not at all about living a tiny life. Quite the opposite, really. By living in a tiny house, we actually find we live a bigger life inside our home and beyond its walls. Finding everyday simplicity in the complexities of everyday life is really helpful, no matter how big or tiny your home is. Letting go of extra stuff that is no longer needed and important to you frees up your physical and mental space for the things and experiences that are meaningful to you. From this whole experience so far, we are learning that living simpler and tiny in one area opens countless opportunities for exploration and new experiences in other areas. Realizing how capable and empowered we can be makes the previously impossible possible. And with a mindset like that, everyday miracles really do happen. If you enjoyed this video episode, Adventure Story, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Post a comment of one of your wonderments and then share our Finding Wonder journey with a friend. The more people sharing reasons for wonder, joy, and gratitude with each other, the happier world we can all create for ourselves and each other. For regular doses of inspiration, follow Sea Tree Wonder on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and give your much needed and appreciative support to us via Patreon. We are pouring loads of time into creating meaningful, inspiring, entertaining, and hopefully helpful content with you. If you even have $4 to share with us each month, it would mean the world to us. Our link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to give us some monthly monetary support, even just $4 a month, is in the description below this video. Friends, thank you for watching. See you next time for more Finding Wonder Tiny House Adventures.